Hey guys, this is Anthony Morganti from AnthonyMorganti.com and this is episode 120 of Photo Critiques. Now I'm sure you guys have heard by now that I'm not accepting any new images for critique. I will be doing critiques for a while though. I have enough to keep me busy all the way through February and well into March. So I'll be doing critiques for a while. If you guys are curious of why I'm not doing critiques anymore, in the description of this video I'll have a link. You can click on it and you could then read about uh, why I'm not going to be doing critiques and the exciting thing, at least I'm very excited about it, uh, the thing I'm going to be doing instead of critiques. And I'm getting emails every day of people interested in it, so I'm really getting more and more excited about it. But I, as I mentioned, I'll be doing critiques for a while. This is episode 120, and in this episode I'm uh, pleased to critique the work again of Steve Ellis. I've critiqued his work in the past, and Steve sent me in some nice wintry images, at least uh, several of them are. And this first one I like. Um, I like what Steve did here. He got low, gave a little different perspective than you normally might see, and shot along the um, the dock and minimized the sky, which doesn't appear to be very interesting. So we minimized that. One thing I should add real quick is Steve had told me in the past that he doesn't like to um, process his images too much, just some uh, minimal processing, which I could respect. A lot of people don't like to process their images too heavily, and that's his style, and, and good for him, you know. And in this one, you can see there's not a lot of processing, so it's very well done, though. The thing, too, on um, this specific image, it still is kind of missing something. I get, um, I get criticized for my critiques when I say that a lot of times an image needs a subject. And I agree, not all images need strong subjects. A lot of times texture, color, um, you know, uh, different elements like that, um, leading lines, uh, you know, different um, unusual things in the shot that um, don't belong together, they um, contribute and as a whole could make the picture very interesting. In this case, it's very white and we have the trees and we have snow and there's really not a lot of difference so in this case I think it needs a strong subject now the strong subject could be relatively simple what I might have did is I might have walked out put strong footsteps in the snow walking out to the edge then I probably would have carefully walked this along this way so I didn't add any more foot, footprints in the snow and right around here I probably would have fell but then once I gathered myself and got back up and got over here, I would have took the shot and you would see like footprints walking out with no one here and nothing coming back. So it kind of tells a little bit of a weird story. So things like that, you could be creative and come up with different things like that. One thing I probably should expound upon a little bit when I mentioned sometimes you don't need, you know, these super strong subjects, you know, a lot of times we like opposites in, in images. And I mentioned in previous critiques, we like opposite colors, uh, the colors that are opposite each other on the traditional color wheel. Now this doesn't apply to this shot. I'm just telling you this in general. For instance, we like uh, red with green. Those are opposite each other on the traditional color wheel. We like yellow and purple. They're opposite. Um, orange and blue, they're opposite. So when you could get these combinations of colors, these um, conflicting colors, a lot, sometimes they're called complementary colors. I don't know, it's kind of weird terms. But they're opposite each other on the, the um, traditional color wheel and they add to the shot. So you don't need a real strong uh, subject in that case. For instance, sunsets, a lot of times you get the blue sky and you get the orange of the sunset. Those are opposite each other on a traditional color wheel so they they add contrast to the shot and I don't mean contrast in the sense that you know whites are whiter and blacks are blacker I mean contrasting looks you know opposite each other on the color wheel so you got orange and blue so things like that you don't need color all the time either you could have textures you could have something you know soft and furry against something very hard and, and met metallic you could have um, different shapes you could have you, you know geometry you could have circles and squares and things like that where things are opposite so in those cases you don't always need a super strong subject these opposites make the photograph very interesting 
But when you don't have that, especially on a winter day like this, where it's very white, very cold, and you don't have a lot of different, um, you know, contrasting things, then we could do something to make it more interesting. You, you know, somebody sitting at the edge of the dock, those footprints like I mentioned, something like that. Let me see here. There we go. This shot here, like it, it still. This I, I think needs a str that strong subject. We have the post of the end of the dock, but there's really not much else. We just have the water, which is kind of blurred out. A little bit of specular highlights, not much though, and it just needs something else. I, and if there was something on this, you know, something unusual, sitting here, um, you know, it, it would add to the intrigue of the shot. You know, this shot, this is, you know, like a very nice exposure. What Steve does uh, on all these winter shots, your camera will tends to want to make snow gray when you're shooting during the day. It's trying to get everything towards, you know, 18% gray. So it's trying to make the snow gray. And Steve did a real nice job exposing it so the snow comes out white. If you're shooting towards the night, it will tend to make the snow blue. It tends to get the white balance off and makes everything a little too cold. Now, Steve did a really nice job on all these winter shots. Every, you know, the snow's nice and white and, um, you know, exposed perfectly. One thing about snow, though, you tend to want to try to get the shots when it first falls. Because when it starts to melt and we get these footprints in it, it just doesn't look as as is nice and we want our shots generally to work nice look nice unless we're going for this real gnarly look on something so in this case here I like what Steve was going for he has these um, angled benches empty uh, you know and but the snow is kind of ratty looking uh, the um, the image itself though as I mentioned is perfectly exposed but we could still um, do do that contrasting thing again maybe you know have a person here with no shirt on reading a book you know it's like the middle of winter and all the snow and somebody's reading a book you know it's just I'm pulling things out of the air but you get my idea if that was in the shot you know a guy sitting somewhere along these benches with no shirt reading a book you know drinking a beer something like you know really kinda off the wall it would add a lot to the shot then you would want to take it too where you would minimize this part of the the image where this kind of you know melting footprint laden snow is because it's not that becoming and and you know so you gotta work the scene still even though you have a strong subject in the scene this shot's very nice uh, there's not again like a, a specific subject but this is nice in, in this case you could see the snow isn't as melted and there's really no footprints that I could see in it compared to like this one and it's a really nice shot. It is, I think, slightly tilted to the right. And we could straighten that real quick. I could do that in Lightroom with the Angle tool. And you could see, all you got to do is find something that you know is supposed to be horizontal. And I would say the opposite bank of, this could be a river or a creek, I don't know what this is here. That probably is should be horizontal. And you just draw along it, and then it will straighten the shot. And you could see it was very slight, just very slightly crooked. But um, it's nice, and we got the snowfall. We have this sign, which is kind of interesting, kind of a splash of color in the shot. You might want to try to exploit that in the future and have it more in, like, um, if you're using the rule of thirds, have it at an intersection point of the rule of thirds. Or if you're like me and use the golden ratio, have it in the intersection point of the golden ratio. Something like that. Um, you know, when you have a splash of color in with all this, like, you know, snow white and, you know, the grays of winter, and you have this splash of color, you try to exploit that. This is the same thing, too. Excellent exposure, um, excellent focus, uh, very technically well done. We just don't have that subject. We don't, we, we kind of have this leading line, although it's being obscured by this here a little bit, but we kind of have this leading line of this um, steps going up a hill but then there's really nothing to resolve on, nothing for our eyes to resolve on. So um, in this case, and we don't have conflicting things, we don't have, you know, uh, you know, conflicting colors, you know, uh, conflicting shapes. There's, uh, you know, we have a lot of ice, but we have no fire, you know. So we need something else, someone walking up this way, a dog is walking up that way, something else. This is an interesting shot. 
Yeah. Again, though, we have this kind of gnarly area here where um, whoever probably did this had to walk through here and do this. So you want to try to minimize this. And um, I, I think the only thing you really could do here is now, like if you were there, get closer, I would say. But I'll try to crop it and give you an idea of what I'm talking about. Like even more something like this now even after you do that we have all this area up here which isn't really that attractive so what I would suggest is if you had a friend with you or something like that if you had them walking across this and walking I'd say walk this way so they're right around here and they're going in this direction to, to the right so them and maybe they're looking down at this that would add some interest, another point of interest, and I think it would make the shot a lot stronger. This uh, too, you got this natural leading line of this uh, road, and we have this natural framing of the trees alongside of the road or this path. We have this tree that looks like it's going to fall and clunk someone on the head. Um, if you had someone walking along the path, I think it would add to the shot a lot. It's a really nice winter scene. It just needs it just needs that subject to really push it over the top. It's a nice shot. Uh, I always talk about you know over and over again if you're um, taking shots of people or animals or even insects that have eyes you always focus on the eye because we as human beings when we view people when we view um, pictures uh, we always look at the eye. Men tend to look somewhere else at first, but we end up looking at the eyes eventually. Uh, that's a psychology. I read that in a psychology book. And you guys could, um, you know, it, men looking at women. So you guys could figure out what I'm referring to. But in general, we always look at the eyes. And so you really want to have the eyes in real tight focus. And Steve did a great job doing that here. We did cut off the ears here. Also, like this cat here, this, this part of the cat isn't that attractive. And so, you know, I always talk about when you're taking shots, you want to minimize the part in the scene that isn't attractive and maximize the attractive parts. And in this case, I think the cat's eye is very attractive. So, again, if you, uh, this was a macro lens, I think, maybe not. I don't know if that's a macro lens or if you have a macro lens. And you want to maybe try to get in in just like, um, I'd like to get his nose in a little bit too, though. And, um, Something like that, maybe, you know, get in real close to the eye and get a shot of the cat's eye. It's, um, it's you know, takes a lot of work to photograph animals because they move constantly and you're trying to focus and get that tight focus on the eye. And in this case, as I mentioned, Steve did a great job uh, getting this uh, cat perfectly focused. It was 1 80th of a second at f5. This shot here, very strong backlight, very strong backlight. And Steve did a nice job of getting this exposed properly so we could see the flower. And these flowers like this, there's not a lot of texture. And these are much better if they're slightly side lit. Because then it brings out some of the subtle texture in the flower. So in a scene like this, I would suggest you work the scene and try to get the light from a different angle not so much backlit because the back we do see a little bit of the veins going through the petals uh, but I think it would be better if it was slightly side lit more from the front but you know a little bit from the side or maybe more from the side a little bit from the front and then you'd get this uh, texture coming out in the flower and you would get this part in the middle better lit and that's uh, the important part where we tend to look. It's kind of like the eyes on the, per uh, we look at the eyes on the person or the eyes of the animal. We tend to look at the center of the flower. And we have some different colors in there. We have some yellows to offset the red. So that's something to think about. This is kind of a still life uh, shot. And, you know, it's got some kind of interesting shadows in the, the basket itself with all this hodgepodge of stuff in it is interesting. It, it keeps your attention. Um, to look at it and to you know figure out what's in there this part back here I don't think is really needed I think Steve might have been going for the shadow back here but it's kind of distracting it's kind of dirty you know it's got some coffee stains it looks like it's just you know kind of a catch-all area probably and and just you know it's got this you know here so 
I would um, concentrate more on this and shoot this from different angles, different focal lengths, and try to minimize that and not worry so much about that shadow. This I think is Steve's best shot. This is a, ni a nice shot and I mentioned Steve doesn't like to process his pictures a lot but he did perfect processing on this. The sky is perfect. Uh, really nice shot. The flags are going nice. Um, you know, very very nice shot. I like it a lot. Um, the only thing slightly, the clocks are slightly cut off and we that's kind of an important facet of this um, um, uh, tower. So you might want to just just if you could have, uh, uh, you know, pulled out just a little bit or brought it down just a little bit and just got the bottom of the clocks in, it would have been a 100% perfect shot. But as it is, it's still an excellent shot. And that's it for Steve. I'd like to thank you for sharing your uh, work with us. I really do appreciate it. And I'd like to thank everyone who watches all my videos. I really do appreciate it. Go over to my website when you have time, anthonymorganti.com. I have a lot of uh, photography stuff over there. And if you can, I'd really appreciate it if you subscribe to my YouTube channel. My YouTube channel is Anthony Morganti. And that's it for now. I'll talk to you guys soon.